in organ systems like GIT, respiratory system, uh, genital and urinary system, uh, there are glands uh, with serous or mucus uh, secretion. Let's compare these two, these two uh, special cells. First, serous cells. Uh, serous cells are sitting on a plasma, on, on a basal membrane. They have a shape of a pyramid. Approximately. The nucleus is usually, usually round shaped. It's made mainly of euchromatin, therefore it's light. There is a well developed uh, granular endoplasmic reticulum because these cells are specialized for producing proteins. So let's add also the ribosomes on the surface of that granular endoplasmic reticulum. Let's add the Golgi complex responsible for preparing the molecules for exocytosis. And especially in the apical region you can often find the secretory granules before they are released uh, outside. So if this is the basal membrane, the nucleus is round. It's light because it's made of euchromatin mainly, which tells you the uh, most of the chromatin is accessible for transcription. There's a very rich granular endoplasmic reticulum with a well-developed well Golgi complex. And they are secretory vesicles or granules. Especially the endoplasmic reticulum plus the secretory granules together are responsible for the basophilic staining. Uh, that means uh, dark blue, dark blue purple. Uh, so the serous cells are mostly basophilic. Let's compare it with the mucous cells. Mucous cells usually have a columnar shape. The nucleus is compressed in the basal compartment. Mostly it's made of heterochromatin, therefore it's dark. The other organelles are still there, but definitely less developed than in serous cells, because most of the cell interior is filled with granules made of complex polysaccharides. We call it mucin and they are later on released. So we got the basal membrane, nucleus in the basal compartment, it's tart because it's made of heterochromatin, And they are mucin granules. And this mucin doesn't stain usually in the routine methods, so that's why the that's why the cells are appear like white or clear. Now, uh, in the human body, you have glands composed of uh, solely serous cells, 
composed of exclusively mucous cells or containing both types. And that's how you can classify serous cells, or serous glands. Uh, comprising all serous cells only. Uh, this is the example of parotid gland, the Ebner, Ebner's uh, glands of the tongue, or the exocrine portion of pancreas. There are also mucous glands in human body, such as the Weber's glands of the tongue, or the radix of the tongue, or Brunner's glands in the submucosa of the duodenum. And there are glands where you can find secretory portions uh, made of serous cells and secretory portions made of mucous cells. You call it mixed or serous mucous glands, such as uh, the other two major salivary glands. Uh, main, uh, I mean the submandibular gland, which is serous mucous but slightly more serous than mucus, okay? Or the sublingual gland, which is also serum mucus, but more mucus than serous. The fraction of mucus uh, units is, is larger than fraction of serous units. Or the glands in, in trachea, in bronchi, the uh, apicolingual gland, uh, the labial gland, etc. Another type of classification of glands could be uh, secretion pa various secretion patterns. So how do cells release their secretion? The first type, the cells are releasing the secretion in small quantities, therefore not changing their shape. This refers to proteins, peptides, water, ions. So the exocytosis, there's an exocytosis of small quantities. This pattern is called mirocrine secretion pattern and a good, good example could be uh, sweat glands. Another pattern is that the cells are accumulating part of the secretion in the apical domain and then they are releasing it together with part of the cell membrane and also part of the cytoplasm. And therefore, you can find tall cells still accumulating the secretion and short cells that have just released it.
So this uh, secretion pattern is called apocrine, and uh, the substances that are released in this and this uh, way are usually lipids, droplets, or large proteins. And examples would be breast gland or apocrine sweat glands. These are different glands than these ordinary sweat glands, which are also called eccrine sweat glands. Eccrine sweat glands are almost everywhere uh, in your skin. Apocrine sweat glands or aromatic sweat glands are only in specific locations such as the, the axilla, the armpit, the groins, they surround the external genital organs and the anus. Third, mechanism uh, looks like this. They are basal cells that are growing and proliferating, so new generations of cells are produced here, but as the cells are aging, they have a tendency to, towards accumulating lipids, lipid droplets. They are losing nuclei until they disintegrate, they die. And the substance that comes out into the duct is actually it's the, it's the cells, the dead cells themselves. So here is accumulation of lipids. Cell death and loss of nuclei. Loss of nuclei. And this pattern is called holocrine secretion pattern. Examples are the sebaceous glands of the human body. Sebaceous glands and the secretion released from the holocrine cell uh, glands is called sebum.